Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. That's right, folks. In a summer full of movies that are not performing well, big budgeted blockbusters, both legacy sequel and independent alike, are plummeting to the ground. The Flash, Elemental, Transformers, Dungeons and Dragons, Shazam failed. Those are kind of out of the summer, but everything's failing. Ant-Man didn't do gangbusters. Everything's kind of falling apart. Indiana Jones, the fifth installment of this legendary character, is doing the same. Abysmal opening weekend. And I get it. Look, here's the thing. I'm not a normal person. And what I mean by that is I have grown up watching all of the original Indiana Jones films. I still have a box set of the VHS tapes of Raiders and Temple and Crusade. I have that. Name another person under 25 that does. I dare you. Like, th this is the thing that I, I don't understand, but I also kind of understand it. Indiana Jones is not a character young people care about. For some reason, there's the implication that he's a legacy character, that this entire generation is like, yeah, I love, like, a character built in the 80s to represent, like, the 30s nostalgia for those directors had for serial characters in the jungle in the desert. That's not something that translates to a 2023 demographic. So, no young person's going to see this movie. On that note, too, they want this to be like, it's the Top Gun Maverick of the year. Look at this. All the elderly people are coming out to check this one out. And I'll tell you one thing. That was the case for my audience. I was in a packed house. Old people went to see this. Older people, people dragging their kids who could be less interested in anything in the world. No child wanted to see this movie. And here's the thing. It had a weird premiere at Cannes where it was like, this sucks. It's not good. The other critics are just like, it's fine. There's nothing to it. The saddest part about Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny is how little any of this matters. The worst, it does the worst crime any movie could do, and that is just being mediocre. It's just fine. It doesn't go for a big swing and try to like change the way you think about the nature of a movie like Halloween's Ends did, a movie that I don't like, but I respect the director and the creative team for being like, let's take a big swing. It's just the biggest problem with an action blockbuster you can have, and that is just it's fine. There's nothing visually pleasing about the camera work or doing anything creative. When it tries to reference the old stuff, you're just like, yeah, I guess that's a thing these Indiana Jones movies do, but you don't really feel anything towards it. It's such a middle-of-the-road movie, and I hate that kind of stuff when it comes to a big movie like this. We have seen time and time again when you take a bigger swing and try something new, the movies that have been kind of taking off this year, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, Into the Spider-Verse, no, Across the Spider-Verse, Super Mario Bros., they are properties people know, but try something a little bit different with a concept they're familiar with. This is not that. Middle of the road bullshit. It's poorly framed, and... I, I don't want to talk too negatively about this film. I do dislike it more than most people, and I, I understand that's going to be a divisive thing to say. I hope that I hope people like it. I, I've seen people saying they like it and they love it. I just think it's so simple. It doesn't do anything interesting to talk about. The camera work is boring. It's just a bunch of just like medium shots where it's just like, yeah, there's the waste up shot of the character and... For some reason, half of this movie is just characters getting in and out of different vehicles, whether it's a boat, a car, a cart, an airplane, and the background is just like a blurry thing passing by. It looks so uninspired and simple that it doesn't do anything to make you go, yeah, this looks like we're moving and having a really interesting mad dash somewhere. Sometimes it does. Look, the action is fine. Like, there's nothing too crazy about the action. It just doesn't do anything you're like yeah that's clearly not an 80 year old man doing this stunt and we're clearly taking our time to tell this part and it's like fine whatever the simple thing is i don't know how much more we we really want of this type of movie i feel like every so often it's the uncharted it's the tomb raider it's the mummy it's, it's all this like everybody just thinks there's still like that nostalgic grab for 
the Raider movie where we're going through like the tombs and we're in, like the catacombs and like there's like a secret puzzle you have to solve. Because once you've seen it enough, you're not doing anything new with that basic concept. Even if you're bringing in a character an audience loves, you're not getting anything new done with that happening. What a simple movie. I just, I was so confused by why these were the choices that were made. First off, let's get this out of the way. This movie cost $295 million, one of the most expensive films ever conceived. Can you tell by looking at it? Absolutely not. They were getting praise for, like, the opening sequence set in the past as a de-aged Harrison Ford. It's unbelievable. It's not. It has some really wonky and janky moments as soon as that thing has to move. The problem with it, too, the face moves too much. If you look too much at, like, a still or anything, it's fine. But as soon as it's, like, in motion slightly, it's moving more than a normal face does when it's trying to be, like, naturalistic. And yes, the human face is expressive and constantly moving. Not the way it moves in this movie, when it's, like, the DH stuff. Doesn't look good. On top of that, it sounds like an 80-year-old man doing his impression of himself 50 years ago. So that's kind of gross. And I guess it's better than, like, an AI voice doing it, but why? I, oh, oh, oh my god. Why do we live in this era where we can't just cast a younger actor to play the young version? Did Solo fuck this up so hard? Because, like, Alden did good. He was good in that movie. The problem was all of you are just assholes, just like, no, it's Harrison Ford, it can't be anybody else. It can, it should, it deserves to be, or we're going to get shit like this for the rest of our lives, where it's just ugly faces of what somebody used to look like, too perfect for what they are, doing terrible stuff. It's such an ugly movie. Even the lighting is trying at times, but it's not trying too hard at other times. The costuming is fine. Like, I do think... He is wearing the outfit you want from him. Everyone else feels like an actual character. I really like the moments where it, it's trying to be nostalgic. Where it's like, yeah, here's Sala. You remember him? boop de boop And we're doing the thing. Like, an eel is just a snake in the water. I guess. Is that funny? I don't know. It's just a problem these movies have where we no longer are telling an original story. Now we are telling you other beats of other movies you know so you understand like this is it. It's it's just like its own problem where we no longer like tell a creative story. A story we're telling now is just a reaction to a story we told before and that sucks and it hurts a movie and you just get so sick of this one. The other thing about this too the acting is just so mid. Like, there's nothing really inspiring in any of the choices people make. Harrison Ford can sleepwalk his way through anything. And on the rare occasion in this movie where he tries to do something, it's believable. He's not, like, funny. He's just kind of grouchy. And it's just kind of angry he has to be here. Which... We're going to get to that in a minute because it's a very fascinating thing this movie wants to talk about. So that's fine. Supporting cast, it's good to see some of those names. When Antonio Banderas shows up and he's like a frogman and he's just like dressed like a like shipwreck from G.I. Joe and he's got like a cane. And you're like, that's a guy. I like that. What a, just a dude that showed up. Maz Mikkelsen is just like an interesting character they should have done more with because he was like a Nazi then he comes to work for the CIA and it's like hey that's an interesting area to explore but he's still a Nazi so we're going to make him the bad guy fully which I, it's fine I, I think they could have used some type some part of that story to explore like a moral gray area of like who the true bad guy is is it the CIA is it the Nazis working for the CIA and they just said like no, the Nazis are the bad guys. And look, I'm not here saying I sympathize with the Nazis or think they should have done something to like justify their actions. I just, it does seem like you could have explored a more morally gray area in a world trying to be more morally gray because that's the adventure Jones is going on in this movie. He's seeing like maybe this child who he thought was going to be one thing turned out to be another thing. And maybe him spending years digging up these tombs was actually the problem. And if that's the more, the morally gray area he's exploring, you could have done the same thing with Maz's character as opposed to just making him. I'm actually the biggest Nazi in the world. I am the top Nazi. I'm going to go kill Hitler. We'll get to that in a minute here too. So he was fine. Everyone was fine. One of the henchmen was just like a big guy. 
and you're like, that's just a big guy. And I appreciate that. He didn't do any big guy stuff though. And I didn't like that. There's also like a kid who shows up and you're like, yeah, that's a kid. Cool. He's fine. Does he hot wire a plane? Yeah, but it's the 60s. So must be easy. But Phoebe Waller-Bridge is taking on the mutt role. You know, Shia LaBeouf in the last one was like, it's me, I'm the new one. And we're like, I guess if you want to be, sure. But now it's Phoebe Waller-Bridge. She plays Helena Shaw, the goddaughter to Indiana Jones. Her father was Toby Jones in like the opening sequence of the movie. She is good. It's fine. I mean, okay. You see criticism from certain groups online talking about her performance, where it's like, oh, she's the most terribly written character in all of film history, where it's like, oh, because she's a capable woman who's doing the thing Indiana Jones did, but she's doing it for her own reason, so it makes her a bitch. It's like, she's written to be complicated and almost intentionally written to piss off a certain sector of people, but... She's doing the same thing Harrison Ford did when he was Han Solo. He's like an outcast, a rebel doing his own thing with a heart of gold who's going to help out in the end. That's what she's doing. That's the literal vibe she's throwing down. And if you don't like that, it's because you're sexist. Like, I'm sorry. She is, she's doing the literal thing that made Harrison Ford's career. And she's doing it with charisma. She's kind of horny in it because Fleabag was a horny show. So we have to see her kind of like smile at guys throughout the movie, but never actually like kiss a guy. It's fine. I mean, would I like to see her kiss a guy? Yeah, because that's what I want. Movies are sexless now. I just want sex in movies. But whatever. She did good. What she's asked to do, she does well. She delivers the performance strong. She is a different enough character from other younger female characters in the Indiana Jones mythos where I buy her relationship. Cool. I don't know. None of the acting was super impressive. It was just all, yeah, we're doing that now. That's what the script said. That's how we're going to deliver it. Funny moments? Kind of. Anything brilliant? Not really. The other thing about this movie, too, is very interesting. So... This is a James Mangold movie, and James Mangold has kind of looked for, like, a. I think his career is kind of, like, trying to reach a resurgence. So, he does this movie, he's, it's the next one he's working on, that Bob Dylan biopic, because we know he's worked on some of those before, like, Walk the Line, like, the most famous of that genre, Ford versus Ferrari, kind of in that feeling, too. So, he's doing Bob Dylan next, and his next two projects after that were the Jedi movie, but like the first Jedi and DC's Swamp Thing. So those are like his next big project. So the guy's clearly a nerd and has reverence for genre material. He made comments a couple weeks ago being like, it would be nice if they just let like Wolverine's story die because of course he worked on films like The Wolverine and Logan. He directed both of those. I mean, sometimes you just have to let things end, right? Because there's literally a scene in Logan where it's kind of been going around Twitter too where it's like you see like the younger CGI Hugh Jackman walk down the stairs with like a blank face becoming the corporate piece of production that a studio wants it to be. And you see Logan and Hugh Jackman look at it like, oh, this is the future that they want for IP and creations. And then you realize that this guy made Indiana Jones 5. There is something weird about that statement where in public he's like, we shouldn't like keep making stuff with these characters and doing legacy sequels. But at the same time, you just made the most expensive one in history. So do you have something to say about that? Kind of, he wants to say something about that. There is something that this movie is clearly trying to say that it's not saying. That is just, maybe nostalgia is the enemy. Maybe because both the hero and the villain of this piece are looking to the past as better days. It is chaotic and it is harmful to this product and to making these kind of things anymore. If you want to get meta about it, it can be a movie like... This movie shouldn't exist, okay? We shouldn't be here watching an 80-year-old man still fighting Nazis when all they want to do is go back in time and change the outcome of the war so there's more Nazis to fight. It's very bizarre when you look at it that way. Kind of, like, there's something to be said there. It doesn't get lost in translation, 
countless times throughout the piece of course because once we set that up like the beginning of this movie when we're in like is it new york city i think it's new york city and harrison's trying to like deliver his speech at like his school no one's listening to him they're going for the moon he's been a man of history and magic and now they're looking for the future and he's just like nostalgic for the past and he has to retire and he's got nothing working for him you're saying something about that and i appreciate that tone and then all of a sudden it's like Nope, we're doing an Indiana Jones adventure now, almost against the wishes of Harrison Ford and Indy in this production. And it's very bizarre that way. So where you could put him on the mission and have him be like, why am I doing this? I shouldn't be here anymore. He's like, no, I guess I got to bring out the whip and drive a cart down a bunch of stairs and stuff. And it's very strange. And then that's the message, right? So that's what it's trying to say. And at the very end, there's this insane sequence that involves magic and time travel. And it's literally just like, hey, maybe this old man can live in the past because that generation can escape like the nostalgia for it. It is, It does kind of have that like Forrest Gump feel of like, this is for boomers. Boomers love this era. We should leave boomers there. But in the timeline, he's 80 years old about, and it's the 60s. So he's more nostalgic for like the 20s and 30s. So let him live there, I guess, kind of, is the vibe they wanted. Like, he's, like, that older generation is more nostalgic for that one, right? I don't want, I don't know how deep I want to get into this message of the movie, but there is definitely something to say about an older generation, and this is coming from a guy who's 25 years old, or something to say about, like, an older generation. I'm going to say 45 upwards. That is just, like... Things were better in my time. I knew things better than that. The world's a mess now. I like living in the past as opposed to seeing the future. And having that be like the crux of your movie and giving the guy the chance to have like that mentality become his reality. But then it's like Disney and Lucasfilm were like, no, fuck that. We have to have you in more of these. Get back on the plane. You're not done making movies, Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones. You've got to come back. we got to make more of these. It's very strange. When this movie wants you to see this guy retire, it's actively dragging him kicking and screaming back into making a movie. It's so weird. It is so weird how it mixes the blend of, like, we shouldn't make these, where it's like, we have to make these forever. We can't let you retire, Indy. I don't get it. I don't understand what you're going for, James. It, it It's such mixed metaphors. Such mixed metaphors, and none of it really matters. And when you watch, like, that final sequence, I'm going to say, like, the last 15 minutes of the movie, you think you haven't understood where he's going to have to realize, okay, I can't live in the past anymore. I have to live in the present day. But I want to live in my version of the present day. But it's like, no, you have to do this because we need you to do it, Indy. This isn't about you. It's about us. Get on the fucking plane. Go make another movie. And to end the movie with him picking up the hat again. Oh, man. Bold. What an insane movie. Like, this is... It's so average. Like, it doesn't look interesting. There's no real creative, like, shots in terms of, like, direction or lighting or framing. It's mid-tier at best for that. The acting is fine and sustainable. The script is just whatever. It doesn't do anything great. It doesn't have... You're not going to be thinking about, like, the MacGuffins the way you think about the MacGuffins for, like, Crusade or Raiders and stuff like that. It, they're just pieces of whatever, and none of this really matters. And in a time where these billion-dollar movies are losing money and they're all going to become failures, essentially... This one, I think, stands out above the rest in the sense of, like, there is nothing about this that, sh that says it needed to be told. The message gets mumbled in the end. Nobody feels like they're having a great time. It doesn't feel like it's an end to indie story. It's just that if we give him the happy thing that he learned a lesson, which did he really, though? Not really. What are we doing? I just... I, I, I'm literally just so exhausted that this keeps happening because we have seen if you take the time and dedication to have these bigger blockbusters mean something, then they can. When you have something like Top Gun Maverick that's just like, hey, 
we need this to happen. Y you might think like this new future is happening, man, but no, the Tom Cruises of the world, we're going to show you that you need us to make this sustainable. And in a universe where Indiana Jones is supposedly that character to an entire generation, we just saw that he's not. He He's not appealing to young people. The archaeological... I think like this Tomb Raider adjacent character is not interesting to people in live action. I think it's entertaining in video games, but who remembers Uncharted, you know? Like, this isn't appealing anymore, and we have to accept that. I think it's time to put this to bed, and this comes right after, like, we got a cast for Tron 3, and I'm like, I love Tron. There's no way to make that appealing. It's the same thing as Indiana Jones. The time where that was relevant and meant something is over. This belongs in a museum because we don't need to look at it or play with it anymore. Because because even if you had an idea and you executed it poorly, it'd be better than just this mediocrity, nothing happens, who gives a fuck. That's what sucks more about any of this, is that I can't even say it's a terrible movie, it's just uninteresting and uninspired. That's the problem. I have went way too long talking about this movie I did not like. So let's wrap this up with this last thing. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I am going to give a 3 out of 10. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And as always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.